and wildlife are not the only constituents of the environment. The environment is an intricate and fragile web of land, water, air and the green biomass on which all living species including us the human beings subsist. Our basic survival needs like food, water, clothing, shelter and the air we breathe in are all drawn from the various components which constitute the environment. Agricultural and industrial development too depends upon the environment to draw its resources. However, India's environment today presents a depressing sight. It is rapidly becoming a vast wasteland. The forest cover is fast depleting into a desert due to increased utilization of wood in our day-to-day -day life. Land and forests are the most fundamental natural resources which support a major part of the population in a developing country like India. The forests provide not only fuel and timber to the people but also provide them with fruits, roots and tubers. More than two-thirds of the workforce in India earns its livelihood through agricultural means. The plants have been a source of many medicines which were utilized not only in the traditional system of medicine as practiced by the forest dwellers but which are of late being extensively used in the modern system of medicine too. Nowadays, neem oil is used as basic ingredient in the preparation of all kinds of mosquito repellents and neem oil cake is used as a pesticide as well as manure for enhancing the fertility of land. Such is the economic importance of plants in our day-to-day -day life. Therefore, degradation of land hits those the hardest who depend upon it for their daily survival directly or indirectly. Degraded land and forest resources means acute scarcities of food, fodder, firewood and water for the poor in rural areas. The iconic image of a rural woman with a pot on her head hides a bitter story of lifelong drudgery and hard labor. Now, the question arises what is a wasteland? The common image is that a wasteland is a vast, gloomy, uncultivated stretch of land. The fact is that to an untrained eye, majority of the wasteland may not even look degraded. More typically are these lands in the Aravali range in the Mewat region of Haryana. Here, the stresses of an arid climate, excessively brackish water and a repetitious cycle of floods and droughts has depleted the productivity of land. According to National Wastelands Development Board, any land which is not producing green biomass is called a wasteland. Generally, we believe that wastelands are lands which produce much less than their potential, are economically unproductive, ecologically unstable and subject to environmental deterioration. The five main reasons that render the land unproductive are deforestation, overgrazing, overcultivation, unskilled irrigation, unplanned industrialization, unplanned urbanization. Most forest soils are not rich in nutrients. When the land is cleared of trees and exposed to sun, the normally dense and nutrient-rich litter consisting of fallen leaves and humus begins to decompose faster. The soil dries out and turns hard. Such hardened soils are called laterite and are incapable of supporting vegetation. During this process, volatile elements such as nitrogen, the chief component of plant protein that assists in healthy plant growth is lost. Degraded forest land degenerates into scrubland where only shrubs and weeds grow. 
over cultivation and over grazing of land denudes the land of its protective vegetative cover hastening the process of soil erosion and land degradation the roots of trees plants and grasses bind the soil thus preventing the top soil from getting eroded which is rich in nutrients and are essential for vegetative growth the denudation of land hastens the process of soil erosion thus exposing it to wind and flowing water which carry away the nutrient rich top soil and in the process decreases the ability of the land to support vegetative cover unplanned and unskilled agricultural practices on hills enhances the process of soil erosion on the other hand traditional agroforestry in which trees and crops are grown together helps protect the land from its erosion by wind and water similar process occurs in the desert areas too the desert soil lacks plant nutrients because it does not hold moisture and is constantly shifting it has been estimated that almost 18 million hectares of land in india is wind eroded land and approximately over 50 300 million tons of top soil is lost annually due to erosion 29% of this top soil or silt piles up in the sea and 10% is deposited in surface reservoirs like dams and canals thus depleting their storage capacity gradually degradation of land due to unskilled irrigation lowers the water table as the pumping out of water from deep bore wells to water the fields saturates the land due to inadequate drainage this alters the solid liquid air ratio which is required for healthy plant growth as a result the water table rises and soil becomes waterlogged waterlogged soils lack in mechanical support to plant causing plants to submerge waterlogged soils lack in air which is essential for root respiration thereby causing congestion of roots and death of plants the increase in salt content of the soil is a direct result of unskilled irrigation in high temperature zones the rate of evaporation is very high thus leaving behind traces of salt on the soil as the cycles of irrigation are repeated the leftover salt accumulates and forms a thick gray or white layer on the surface when the salt content of the soil exceeds 2000 to 3000 parts per million the soil water becomes toxic for most plants as a result every year we are losing thousands of hectares of productive land due to unskilled irrigation practices approximately 6.5 million tons of agricultural produce is being lost by india every year because of salination of land about 9 million hectares of land in india is salt affected saline soils contain different soluble salts mainly sodium chloride and sodium sulfate the plant's capacity to absorb water through irrigation or through soil is reduced due to presence of these salts in excess which leads to drought like conditions such soils are permeable and can be reclaimed more easily by leaching action of water leaching action is a process in which downward movement of soluble nutrients occur with moving water through soil profile besides excessive irrigation urbanization and industrialization too have contributed in a major way to loss of productive land Since 1950 an estimated 1.5 million hectares of productive land have been gobbled up due to unscrupulous and lopsided development of towns and cities Agricultural land adjoining Delhi and other metropolitan cities is being diverted towards housing and industrial constructions These are the lands which have forever succumbed to the pressures of economic growth due to increased urbanization and industrialization this loss of agricultural land 
is only one of the fallouts. The more pernicious impact of urban and industrial growth is the pollution of water system. Due to urbanization alone, more than 286,000 metric tons of waste water are being discharged by cities not only into natural water bodies like rivers, lakes, ditches and ponds, but also on agricultural land. Similarly, industrial effluents are rendering the productive land into wasteland. These industrial effluents contaminate water bodies both in land and coastal, thereby affecting the quality of life at large. This is more evident in case of deforestation. Rapacious desires of grabbing land by industrialists and colonizers are contributing towards deforestation. During the 1943 famine of Bengal, large areas of scrubland were released from reserved forests for agricultural cultivation. The slopes of Nilgiri Hills in the Western Ghat were pressed into agricultural cultivation during scarcity of food. These slopes, once deforested, became more prone to degradation due to water and wind. The basic story of deforestation and the accompanying degradation remains the same in most parts of the country, but the contributing factors are often varied and complex. The industrial and urban demand for timber has led to indiscriminate deforestation. During the Second World War, millions of tons of timber wood were felled to make a variety of ammunition. The rich deciduous and lush green forests of Western Ghats were felled to meet the increasing demand of construction industry as well as to make railway sleepers. Mining that covers more than 700,000 hectares of land is another major cause of deforestation. The frightening story of Masuri in Uttar Pradesh is quite well known. During 1970s, private limestone quarrying in the area increased three folds. In 1979, more than one third of the 90 limestone quarries were in the reserved forest. So, roads were cut through forests, trees were hacked down, and land was blown into smithereens, resulting in the formation of wastelands. Thus, wastelands are created either directly by human activity or by natural calamity. More often, it is human greed that renders the land vulnerable to erosion and thereby creating wastelands. Typically, there are three categories of wastelands. Cultivated land affected by soil erosion, degraded forest land, land degraded due to discharge of sewage and industrial affluents, dumping of garbage, and salination of land owing to excessive irrigation. Do we have an answer for man-made or natural calamities that have culminated in the formation of wasteland? Well, there are certain ways by which we can reclaim and develop wasteland into greenland. Today, as a result of extensive research, a host of technologies are available to tackle the growing menace of wasteland. Recently, a model of mixed farming system has been developed by using sewage water for production of spirulina, an algae of high nutritive value which is used as a poultry feed and fish feed. Sludge, which is a byproduct of sewage water, is used for production of biogas, which is used as fuel as well as generation of electricity. The residue of sludge is used for manuring of land. Irrigation the treated water is used for irrigating the fields for domestic use and is also used as drinking water for sheep, goats, cattle, buffaloes. The sewage water is used for aqua farming for raising various species of fish. Garbage dumps are now being used as manuring the agricultural land and for afforestation and cultivation of vegetables too. The treated sewage water is being used for growing many varieties of plants such as many species of eucalyptus, populus, subabul, vegetables 
and other plants of economic importance. Likewise, industrial effluents are nowadays being used for growing many varieties of eucalyptus canaldulensis, which is used for manufacturing batches, for pharmaceutical purposes and for construction purposes. The technological solutions to waste land are attributed to five major objectives. Improvement of the physical structure and the quality of soil. Improving the availability and quality of water. Prevention of soil erosion. Landslides and floods. Conserving the biological resources of the land. Appropriate utilization of waste lands for agricultural purposes. To achieve these objectives, a mass movement was launched by the women folk of Bankura, a small district in West Bengal, with the support of Centre for Women's Development Studies, CWDS, and International Labour Organisation, ILO's Programme for Rural Women, New Delhi. Today, a single sal tree stands on the sacred hillock of Bamini Singhni, a mute witness to the reckless deforestation of this once green land. The lush forests of Bankura have all but disappeared. What remains is miles upon miles of degraded land too wasted to provide sustenance to the people. A large percentage of the population of Bankura is tribal for whom forests are crucial for survival. And the district today is one of the least developed and poorest in the state of West Bengal. Through the heart of the forest, roads were built. On these roads came traders and contractors. In their relentless drive for profit, a whole lifestyle was destroyed. People who once ate fruit and honey from the forest were now forced to forage for food from an inhospitable and infertile land. Gradually, this land too was usurped from them by unscrupulous traders and moneylenders. Entire villages would migrate as often as four times in a year to alien lands to work in often inhuman conditions as agricultural labor. The CWDS volunteered to shoulder the responsibility of coordinating an employment generation program. It was recognized that any such effort would have to be linked to the regeneration of Bankura wastelands given the close link between the forests and the women. Thus, a dream was born. A dream in which barren wastelands would be transformed into Arjun and Asan plantations, where tussar silkworm rearing would be carried out by the women on a collective basis. The project has regenerated over 400 acres of wasteland and involves 1,700 women from 21 village-level women's societies. আমাদের গ্রামে আমরা যেভাবে সংগঠন তৈরি করেছি আমরা নিজে নিজে আমাদের নিজের স্বাস্থ্যের জন্য আমরা করি না আমরা গ্রামের যতজন আছে যে মহিলা সংগঠনে তাদের জাতীয় উপকার গ্রামে গরিবের জন্য উপকার এর জন্য আমরা তসর বাগান করেছি কোনো দিনও যেখানে যে কিছু সেইখানে আবাদ হয়নি কিছুতে হয়নি পাথর ডুংরি একেবারে নিজের রাস্তি জায়গা তো সেইগুলোকে গ্রামের ছেলেকে বুঝিয়ে বলে তারপরে মেয়েদিকে সংগঠন করে দিয়ে তারপরে সেই জায়গাটা আমাদের গ্রামের মহিলার জন্য অনুদান লিখে দিয়ে ছেলেরা তারপরে আমরা হাওয়েভার টেকনোলজি অলোন ক্যান নট প্রোভাইড এ কমপ্লিট সলিউশন টু দ্য প্রবলেম টেকনোলজিক্যাল সলিউশনস ক্যান ওয়ার্ক ওনলি ইফ দ্য রিসোর্সেস টু अप्लाई দিস টেকনোলজিস আর ফ্রিলি अवेलेबल Involvement of the local people in social forestry and reclamation works is the only answer for wasteland development.
wasteland development in the last two decades has experienced and demonstrated that it is only by the people's motivation and participation that technologies have worked. It is cooperation and not competition that forms the very basis of existing life systems for our future survival. It is therefore imperative on our part to live in congruity with the environment and stop the ongoing process of wasteland formation.